Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to take a look at one of the earliest members of the Free Deity Win Club as we check out John Curtin and Australia. Does he still belong in that prestigious club? Well today we're going to try to find out. I want to pause right here and thank you guys for all the support on these videos. It gives me a lot of reasons to continue making them. And remember if you like this episode, please leave me a like and that might lead to someone else finding this video as well. So, as always, I appreciate all the support that I'm getting. Australia's bonus, Land Down Under, gives your coastal cities plus 3 housing. You get culture bombs for pastures, and your districts, except for harbors and industrial zones, get plus 1 yields from charming tiles and plus 3 from breathtaking tiles. Now this is a pretty fantastic ability. First, you were one of those early DLC sieves that got culture bombs, so that's pretty enjoyable. You also get a huge start bias towards pasturable resources, so that culture bomb really does come in handy. The housing is also significant, as long as you have an aqueduct and a river in your coastal city, which is not hard to do, you will always have more housing than just a plain flatland river city. The appeal bonus is what really is the best here though. You're almost always going to have charming tiles with your coastal cities and you will pretty often have either a reef or a mountain tile. So it's incredibly easy to get an early, and I mean first district early, plus 5 to plus 7 campus which is absolutely game changing. I see this however as being a consistent bonus instead of a spiky bonus. You're pretty much going to have plus 3 or plus 4 districts for every district you place. And this can either improve over time when you get conservation or start improving appeal with your other districts or wonders, or it can decrease over time as you build mines and industrialize. You can either make your bonus stronger if you're playing a culture game, or weaken your bonus off as you finish your uh, science tree and you're trying to get stronger production. This does make your early game a lot more smooth, which makes your play as Australia a lot more consistent, which is what makes them so good. John Curtin's ability, Citadel of Civilization, is also pretty good, uh, but only when it can be utilized, because it is situational. You get plus 100% production when you have had a ward declared upon you within the past 10 turns. And you get the same bonus when you liberate a city to its original founder. Now this is great when it triggers, but you have to go out of your way to get it to trigger. I don't know. I feel like in the past it was much stronger because the AI felt a lot more aggressive, but today the AI feels a lot less aggressive and I don't get war declarations very often, so essentially I don't have this bonus unless I'm going to look for liberating cities, which I don't do very often. The liberation bonus only works well if you're playing in like dramatic ages where you can s consistently get those liberated cities, so even though this is great, you don't rely on it very much at all. Australia's unique unit and its unique improvement are both pretty good. The digger, your unit, is a super strong infantry that gets plus 10 strength on coastal tiles and plus 5 strength in foreign territory, essentially oh, and it's already 3 points stronger than the regular infantry, so you are essentially getting a plus 18 bonus if you're using them to attack coastal cities over regular infantry and not only that they uh, don't cost oil to produce but they do come super late in the game at replaceable parts so you really have to go the majority of the game without this bonus and the outback station gives you food and production and extra production and food from pastures and other outback stations and are generally a pretty solid improvement but they come later in the middle stages of the game so you're really relying on your appeal bonus to get you through the early game so that you can consistently level out in the middle game and late game with your uniques and your bon your digger and various things Australia is a nice and easy sieve to use to learn the higher difficulties with. The land down under helps you keep in pace with the deity AI. You aren't getting enough bonuses to overtake them early like the Khmer do or that Portugal might, but you will get at least one very strong district to hold you over while you expand and defend yourself. 
If you get declared upon, which does happen on the higher levels, you're going to produce more, so you're not as worried about those early game war declarations. You're incentivized to get coastal cities, and coastal cities, in my opinion, are generally better than land-based cities, uh, except that you usually struggle with housing, and Australia doesn't struggle with housing. So if you want to move up in difficulty and learn like how the... Like, if you want your first deity wins, play as Australia, because it doesn't take that much work to get it. You're just rewarded for playing how you would normally play. To me, Curtain should be played as a science sieve. You get sick campuses, and beyond the amazing ones, you consistently get pretty good campuses. You will easily get rationalism procced in all of your cities, and you can manipulate the appeal using districts and conservation to get there by the end of the game. You always have sick production in a lot of cities too, as long as you have produ as long as you have pastures, and you're likely to be declared on when you start winning the game later, so that'll boost you through your space race projects. So 10 out of 10. Domination's really good. Wait until a sieve takes a city state, liberate them, produce more units, and take people out. You really won't go ham until the modern era when you get your diggers though. So 8 out of 10 here. Diplomacy also works well for Australia. Your commercial hubs are great, your production is good, your culture is great, you'll be liberating city-states for suzerainty. You were really incentivized to go for diplomacy as Australia, so 8 out of 10. I have recently started to like playing as a cultural Australia as well. You really get amazing theater square adjacency if you put down a wonder, you're producing, uh, you're boosting the appeal on nearby tiles to get to breathtaking, then you put down your uh, theater square and you get the plus three for breathtaking and plus two for being adjacent to a wonder, so you're getting a plus five uh, adjacency theater square, put down an entertainment complex and you get plus seven. That's some of the highest uh, consistent adjacency on a theater square you can get in the whole game so you're really going to shoot through the the civic tree the odd thing though is that you're not incentivized to go for national parks or seaside resorts which is really the cultural victory meta right now but you're going to have great holy sites for rock bands you're going to have a lot of wonders and you're going to get through the culture tree faster than anybody else so eight out of ten Religion is probably the worst route for Australia, but it isn't bad either. You get, again, really good holy sites. See how good districts are? <laughs> districts are everything in this game, so having good districts makes everything else just easier. You will, you'll either get great holy sites or consistently good holy sites, but you don't get any bonuses towards a profit, and I do find that I'm often losing profits to other people as Australia. However, if you can get a plus six holy site and work ethic and bonus from liberating or being declared on, uh, if you get bonus from being declared on and liberating, which I think stack, you are going to produce so many things out of your cities that nobody will be able to keep up with you. So that's a six out of 10. Overall, I would say Australia is still a very strong sieve, but they have suffered from some power creep. You get consistently great bonuses, and you are able to smooth out your early game, and you can easily win with this sieve. But where this appeal bonus used to feel crazy and flashy, it feels more tame in the modern meta of the game. I like Australia, and I'm going to give them an A+, but I don't see them as the S tier sieve that they used to be anymore. Let me know what you think about Australia in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.